So uh, at this point, since we're coming up to lunch and Steve has to leave afterwards, um, I'd like to go from the yawning chasm of nihilism of Sam Harris <laughs> to the cosmological corner. You don't say that a second time. Right? You know, so once was don't say that a second years, time. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so I'm the guy who gets to keep you from your lunch. Um, yeah, I have. Uh, it's even worse than that uh, because uh, I have to leave uh, right away. I have to be in. Austin uh, tomorrow morning, and so uh, after I finish saying what I'm going to say, I'm I'm going to disappear going the back door. <laughs> <laughs> in a puff of smoke. <laughs> um, That's a great opportunity. Then. But I, I think uh, I'm glad to have a chance to address this uh, without any hope of answering the question, because I think it's such a, an important question. If not religion, what? Um, certainly. Uh, I'm not one of those who would rhapsodically say, oh, science, you know, that's all we need to do is understand the world and uh, look at pictures of the Eagle Nebula and uh, we'll, it'll, it'll fill us with such joy we'll, we won't miss religion. Uh, I, I, think, I think we will miss it. Uh, I, I see religion somewhat as a, a crazy old aunt that... Um, you know, she she tells lies and she stirs up all sorts of mischief, and uh, she's getting on, and she may not have that much li life left in her, uh, but you know, she was beautiful once, and when she's gone, w we may miss her. Um, she's been with us for a long time. Uh, the desire for myths and uh, but still, you know, she does a lot of harm, and it's good that she's going. Uh, uh, the desire for, for myths and uh, for consolation, uh, Sam spoke of that very movingly, uh, having to console people for the deaths of their loved ones. Um, it's something science can't provide, the sense of magic about the world. Um, also, with all these uh, things that religion can do, it, it, it adds to it then that you do it in a community of fellow believers, of, of uh, fellow Christians or Jews or Muslims or whatever. Uh, there's a religious mentality that um, yearns for that. And that's, there's a great danger in this with the disappearance of religion that the religious mentality will not disappear. Uh, it's often been pointed out, for those of us who discount the moral value of religion, that some of the greatest evils of the 20th century were perpetrated by uh, regimes that um, were not at all religious, uh, Nazi Germany, Stalinist Russia, Maoist China, uh, Pol Pot's Cambodia. But these, the leaders of those regimes were not mere thugs. They played on the desire of their people for a big truth, for something about which they could organize their lives. People want that big truth, whether it's racial superiority or the dictatorship of the proletariat. They want sacred scriptures whether it's Mein Kampf or the Little Red Book. And that, that danger, I think, is not very different from the danger posed by religion. It's the danger of the religious mentality that wants something transcendent in our lives that will join us together with other people who are like ourselves and will answer all the difficult questions about how to balance one thing and another in our lives. In opposition to that, the, the reasonable person, the scientist, what can we offer? We can offer just a lot of little truths. Uh, we should be good to each other, and we should try to be honest, sometimes even to ourselves. Um, we should uh, enjoy beauty where it exists, and if we possibly can, create a little bit uh, ourselves. These little truths which we pursue individualistically, not in communions, 
Uh, these do not provide that excitement that the religious mentality hungers for. But it, it may be all we have, and we have to try to live with that. How can we live with, with so little? Well, it's not easy. Uh, there's, one can take a certain grim satisfaction in recognizing things as they are. For example, um, uh, again, Sam said, uh, it doesn't take away from love that we understand the biochemical basis of, of love. It, it, doesn't it, is, it doesn't necessarily take away from it, but it takes a certain balancing to be able to live in a world where our finest emotions are at the same time something we understand in non-spiritual ways, in biochemical ways. We have to have them both in our minds at the same time and take a certain grim satisfaction in the fact that we can, we can deal with that and, and still love. Uh, you know, Richard Dawkins is here, so I will say that this is a, an ideology I'm describing that is not a meme. This is not something that naturally tends it, lends itself to self-perpetuation uh, by punishing disbelievers, say. Uh, it, this is a life without religion is difficult. It's not easy to do without it. We have to try and do our best. Uh, I don't have any simple answers. Perhaps other people here will have better things to say about how we can live without religion. Without religion, what? Uh, one small thing I might add is that um, one of the things that uh, where religion itself can be helpful is uh, in providing a source of humor. <laughs> that I think humor is, uh, of all human traits, uh, one of the ones that will survive uh, and uh, provides a, a great consolation uh, in the works of Shakespeare, I think his greatest moments are when in the midst of tragedy, uh, some comic proletarian comes on the stage, a gravedigger or a doorkeeper or a gardener or a seller of figs uh, who tells you, who wishes you joy of the worm. And the, the humor puts the tragedy in context and gives you a, a, a sense of being able to see human affairs from a greater perspective. Um, and religion, the whole long, sor sorry history of monks and rabbis, priests, ulams, bonzes, um, ayatollahs, it's a running river of harmless merriment <laughs> that will go on, uh, I think, amusing us long after uh, people have stopped taking it seriously. Thank you. <laughs>